Good morning. My name is David Holzer, a senior fellow and primary audit instructor for the SANS Institute. I'm uh, this morning doing a brief demonstration for you of just one very tiny piece of the audit track that we teach. Uh, what we're focused on here is the security of wireless networks and how we can audit them and demonstrate sometimes that there's weaknesses. There's been a tremendous move away from using WEP, which is fantastic. Uh, we've moved over to WPA and WPA2, but it turns out that there's some serious problems there too that we would need to verify as auditors. And of course, uh, here's a demonstration of how we can go about testing that. Now, what I have here is a system that's already set up and it's got a wireless interface on it. It's a WLAN zero. And I'm going to demonstrate briefly how we can use a couple of tools to discover a wireless network that we'd like to test and then see whether or not it's got a sufficiently strong password. So to do this, let me just uh, go into a directory here and we'll I know which network I'm going to go after here. And in this directory, what I'm going to first do is start up something called Airmon. Airmon is going to allow me to start a wireless sniffer on WLAN 0. Now, of course, there are a lot of ways to do this. This is just one. Uh, this is the easier way rather than doing it manually myself. Once that's set up, and if I look at the wireless adapters again, you can see that MON0 now exists and is set in monitor mode. So it's actually running as a sniffer, and the interface is up. My next step, step is I'm going to run a tool called Air Dump. And I'm just going to run that on monitor zero and see what sorts of things are visible. Now, I'm doing this in a lab environment, so there's only one visible. I also happen to have the antenna pointed right at the access point, so it's very, very easy to find. But if I were to move the antenna around, you would quickly see that there's actually a lot of access points around here. Uh, oh, and one of them just showed up, our corporate network. So there you can see that there's this one called Days In, and perhaps that one gathers my attention. So that's the network that I need to do my testing on. I'm going to just stop AeroDump, and I'm now going to specify some additional information for it. What I need to do is write what it finds. I'd like to write capture files, but I'd also like to really just focus in on just the data for this particular network. We can see that that network is running on channel 7, so let me specify channel 7 so that it's not hopping from channel to channel. I'd also like to make sure that it's only looking for traffic for this base station. So I'm just going to copy that base station ID and paste it in here. And oh, for write, I also need to specify a prefix. I'll just call this test and start it up. So now it begins capturing data, and we can see really useful things so far. We can see, for instance, that this particular network is running on channel 7. It's running WPA2 and CCMP with a pre-shared key. This actually turns out to be a very vulnerable installation. The mistake we make is that sometimes we configure our WPA networks and we choose to use it with pre-shared keys. In a corporate environment, that's just not acceptable. So if we were auditing the wireless in a corporate environment and found that, that's a warning sign we would absolutely need to test the strength of that key. We're going to demonstrate how to do that. We may even want to demonstrate to people why it is that they don't want to be running WPA2 with pre-shared keys, but instead would want to run it with certificates. Now, we can see here that it's captured a lot of things. We can see there's a lot of packets coming from one particular station. What I'd like to do is capture a WPA2 handshake authentication request. You see, in order to break WPA2, I either need to wait until I see a handshake, because at the handshake, the key will revert back to the original pre-shared key. Either that, or I could force there to be a re-authentication attempt. And that's a much more interesting way to do it. So I'm going to switch over to another window here, and I'm going to go into that same directory. And you can see here that it's created a number of files. There's a capture file where it's gathering data, but there's also this test CSV. And in the CSV, it's got all of the data that I need to actually run a deauthentication attack. Now, there is a, a tool called Air Replay that we can use to run the deauthentication attack, but I've actually got a very, very simple script that's going to uh, automatically. automatically run my deauthentication. 
Of course, it only works if you can remember where it is. There it is, auto DI. So I'm going to cat this file, the test01.csv, through user espen auto DI. And while that's running, I'm going to switch over to the other window. And what I'm hoping to see is a marker up here that shows me that it has successfully captured an authentication attempt. So in the background, of course, it's running the deauthentication attack against different hosts that it's discovered, different clients. And on this screen here, after the deauthentication has been completed, we're going to hope to find a, an actual authentication, a key exchange. Now we can see down here the number of packets increasing for the different IP or MAC addresses that it's seen. That's the host that it's currently trying to run the deauthentication against. 8E4A74. Just as an interesting side point in this demonstration, I only have one host that's trying to talk to days in, but apparently, as you can see, there have been a number of hosts that have tried to connect to that access point, even in just a few seconds that this thing has been up and running. Ah, it now looks like it's up to the one that we are controlling. Ah, do you see that? A WPA handshake. At this point, we can stop. Now, in running our audit, the network was never really affected. We've never broken the network. We haven't uh, taken the network down in any way. All we've done is forced a client to re-authenticate. And that client is still working just fine on the network because the re-authentication happens automatically. If you want to be more passive, you could simply start your sniffer up and let it run until an authentication event happens. You're going to see those probably in the early in the day when people are coming into work, for instance. But if you're impatient like me, you can just run the deauthentication attack against the different nodes that you can see they're communicating. Once you have the WPA handshake, we can use that capture file that's been collected, test01.cap, with a really useful tool called CalPack. Now there actually is an arrow crack tool that's part of the same toolkit, but CalPaddy is a little bit faster at this work. This tool is written by a guy named Josh Wright. He's another one of the instructors for SANS. You can see his contact information here at the top. But what it will allow us to do is run an attack against that pre-shared key in the capture file. To do it, we're just going to add a couple of options. We're going to tell it to read the test01 file. We're going to tell it, and I'm going to start with a regular dictionary. The dictionary I'm going to use is, I've got it uh, off in a directory here. Uh, word lists. And this is a really large dictionary that came off the Milverm site. Very, very comprehensive dictionary. And then finally, you have to give it the access point name. This is because the name of the access point, the SSID, is actually used in creating the, the keys that are used in the authentication. So I'll get that started running. Now, what I'd like you to just see is how slowly this runs. Right now, it's taking each word out of the dictionary, mixing it in with days in, and hashing it to come up with what that pre-shared key would look like in the actual data. And you can see how long it took to come up with even just a thousand tests. I happen to have also a set of pre-computed hashes installed here. They're in a, another directory called Rainbow, and in that directory you'll see that there's names of all different access points. These are pre-generated to match those access points with the, with the hashes or keys that you might find in a password file. So rather than running it with the, ha with the password file, what I'm going to do is use the dash D option. Now this is what I would do in a real-world test or a demonstration for an organization, show them that their wireless might need some work. Using the dash D option, I can now specify that file. Off it goes, and you can now see it's tens of thousands of hashes are being run very, very quickly. And in just a few seconds, we've recovered the pre-shared key. Now this is just one of the tests that we demonstrate in the class, a very, very short piece out of a 36-hour class. 
if you're interested in looking into more of how to audit all aspects of a business, all of the different types of security problems you can have, and to demonstrate how or why certain things are insecure, you might like want to take a look at the advanced IT auditing class that we offer. Thanks very much for watching.